Thanks for your patience to really understand. But I've got a few things to, to talk about. Thank you and good afternoon. Um, on the weather front, uh, continuing to have some good news uh, with that rain continuing to contract to the north and, uh, and the falls are uh, no less than expected, up to 50 mils uh, in most places. There are some isolated areas with some, uh, some heavier falls, uh, but they're not contributing uh, to, the, to the current flood event. So uh, that's good news and, uh, and we hope, obviously, that that continues. Uh, in terms of uh, places to watch, uh, as we said yesterday, uh, Emerald, Bundaberg and Rockhampton uh, continue to be the focus of attention for uh, the future. Uh, in Emerald, um, at present we're, uh, we're anticipating a flood event that's higher than 2008. Uh, if you remember back, uh, that flood cut the, uh, the road. Uh, we had people at evacuation centres with Emerald uh, cut off for, uh, for some time. We're expecting this event will be probably 300 millimetres higher than that, uh, and on this occasion we'll cut off both the road and the rail uh, access to Emerald. Uh, for the last event, we were able to continue to supply Emerald by rail uh, over the rail bridge, uh, but that will be lost. We are putting in place uh, helicopters uh, that will be able to continue to resupply uh, Emerald, uh, and people will be moving uh, either to family and friends or to evacuation centres. Uh, the peak there is expected on Friday, and um, as I say, the evacuation centres are being prepared, uh, with bedding and, uh, and all the things that are necessary to, uh, to keep uh, those going. Uh, and we're working with the Department of Communities and uh, Red Cross to, uh, to be able to support those evacuation centres. Uh, in Bundaberg, uh, the flood peak uh, again expected during the day. 300 people have been moved out of the caravan park in Bundaberg. They're being relocated or asked to move on, uh, and there's likely to be uh, further inundation of property there. So, Bundaberg is an area being watched very, very closely uh, today. Uh, and I think you, uh, you know that the, uh, the Premier and the Minister are visiting Bundaberg uh, and Rockhampton uh, during the course of today. So, they'll be getting a first hand uh, report on, uh, from the ground on what's likely to be occurring there. Uh, in Rockhampton, um, we, we are expecting a major flood in Rockhampton uh, during next week. Uh, this will be a significant flood, uh, likely to close road and rail access to Rockhampton. Um, we expect at this stage, and these are early predictions, uh, with lots more modelling to be done. Uh, as you can understand, the river systems uh, in that catchment, uh, there are, it's a huge catchment with lots of river systems. Some of those haven't peaked as yet. So the Bureau uh, needs to get that data before they can give an accurate picture of the, uh, of the height. Uh, but at this stage we are planning for uh, 400 homes to have water around them and up to 50 uh, properties with water up to the floorboards and, uh, and maybe above. Um, so this will be a significant event for Rockhampton, but one we continue to watch and monitor closely. Uh, as you be aware, um, the township of Theodore we have been undertaking an evacuation of the, uh, the township. Uh, as far as I'm aware, and uh, my colleagues, uh, evacuating an entire town in Queensland is unprecedented, um, and that evacuation has gone extraordinarily well. All the residents are now out of Theodore and have been relocated either to a mining camp at Mower as a staging point um, or into other townships uh, around. Uh, that was undertaken by helicopter morning, uh, some residents were very concerned about uh, their pets, uh, and arrangements have been made uh, for their pets to be relocated uh, as well. So as you can imagine, many people with companion pets are, are very nervous uh, about leaving them behind in those uh, conditions. Uh, we ask uh, all people who have been affected um, by this flood to be patient. There has been a significant and extraordinary amount of rain associated with this event. These floodwaters are likely to remain high for a long period of time. Uh, in some cases, that might be measured by weeks rather than days. So people need to be very patient um, about if they have moved out of their property, it may be some time 
before they can move back in. People have had their properties inundated, then obviously safety is a key issue, and those properties will need to be inspected uh, from both the health perspective and also uh, from electrical safety before people uh, can move back in. So patience is the key here. Uh, people need to understand we're working as hard as we can, uh, but these waters will go down uh, when nature tells us they'll go down, uh, not when we want them to. Evacuation centres uh, around Queensland, uh, last night there were over 700 people still housed uh, in evacuation centres and many more are staying with family and friends. Um, so the scale of this event is significant. Uh, the Department of Communities uh, is ramping up to provide assistance uh, to those people affected. Um, and uh, what I'll do is give you a number, 1800 173 349. And if people have been affected or are facing hardship of any kind as a result of this flood event, they should call that number uh, and communities will be able to tell them what assistance is available uh, to support them through this difficult period. Uh, in terms of safety, um, roads continue to be a concern uh, and Brett will, will speak more about that in a moment, I'm sure. Uh, as the waters do go down, I'm sure we'll find lots of damage to roads um, and so again, we call on people to be patient. As roads are impassable, do not attempt to go through them, do not attempt to go through water. When the water recedes, uh, the pavement of the roads is likely to be damaged, um, so observe all speed limits. There are going to be road workers out attempting to repair these roads. Drive slowly and safely around those people. They're attempting to get you home as quick as you can, and they don't want people screaming past at 100 plus kilometres an hour, because that makes their life dangerous. So if we can all show a little patience and regard the people who are trying to, uh, to help, uh, that would be fantastic. In terms of water, uh, a number of uh, these communities uh, will need to uh, closely look at the water. Um, if the water is discoloured or you're at all concerned, uh, then the quickest thing is to boil that water for three minutes or more, uh, and then it will be safe for drinking. Uh, so just monitor that closely. We don't want people getting sick um, because of uh, contaminated water. Uh, and as I indicated, uh, those people who have had uh, water above their floorboards, uh, you will need an electrical inspection before the electricity can be reconnected uh, to your home. Um, we will attempt to try and coordinate uh, extra electricians to, uh, to support and undertake that so that people can get back into their homes at the earliest possible time. Uh, but again, we, uh, we plead for people to be patient during this um, and the other thing, the final thing, is the best source of information about things generally is through your local council. Um, so if there are any issues, any concerns, um, other than those that I've spoken about, uh, contact your local council and they'll be able to give you information uh, about your local community. Thank you, Brett. Thanks very much, Brett. Um, a couple of issues I'd like to touch on. The first one's road safety. Uh, Bruce uh, correctly has pointed out that uh, we're still in a response and a recovery mode, so we are seeing waters falling uh, in areas all around the state, you know, while other areas, of course, water is still rising. Uh, many people at this point in time are uh, making plans for New Year's Eve. There's people returning from Christmas uh, festivities, and of course, uh, there's a general traffic associated with school holidays. We're appealing to people to plan that, that, those trips. To consult with the 13 uh, 1940 number on road closure. But as Bruce pointed out uh, quite correctly, there's going to be a lot of emergency services workers uh, fixing roads. As water recedes, uh, there'll be potholes and other damage to roads. We're asking people to drive to the road conditions, uh, to uh, plan their trips very carefully, and to respect uh, those emergency services workers who are repairing roads. <coughs> Yesterday, at Oakley we had a situation where uh, someone has removed and uh, shifted uh, the road closure sign. Uh, this caused a uh, fire or fine to skid off the road. This is another example of the consequences uh, that can happen when people uh, do silly things. Uh, this happened at Oakley uh, yesterday afternoon last night and uh, it's uh, delayed uh, the fire or fine from getting to uh, the other situation. Also yesterday uh, we had uh, 17-year-old and, and a 15-year-old brother and sister uh, who had to be uh, rescued uh, in, uh, in uh, flooded waters near Boston. 
Um, once again, we'd like to reinforce the importance of, for everyone, whether on pedestrian traffic uh, or whether in vehicles, not to enter flooded water. Uh, you know, we've had a long period of drought in Queensland. Uh, and people are generally inexperienced in dealing uh, with flooded waters. Uh, entering those waters is perilous. And once again, as the bird led to some personal personnel uh, from core duty uh, to having to rescue them. Uh, that uh, brother and sister were very, very lucky uh, to survive yesterday. And uh, representatives uh, from the Queensland Fire and Rescue Authority told me there's been 12 um, swift water rescues yesterday. So uh, thank you for assisting us in getting that message out. It's so important that people don't drive into or otherwise end up a spot of water. <coughs> Could I ask the most important question of all of this? Yes. About resting the dogs and cats? Have they gone back for all the dogs and cats? Um, what happened was those people who were concerned uh, had delayed their departure. Um, the uh, containers to take the dogs and cats uh, has come in today, so the people have been able to go there and work with their pets. But they wouldn't go to take the dogs? Yeah, that's, and that's a fairly normal uh, response from people who are on that, and so do others. Uh, well, when you put those entire town back there, it's not like a native thing to do. That's absolutely right. Mm. So, so I hope you got some shots of that. That'll be more important than everybody else. What's happening in the office? So, so was it that they, they couldn't take them initially because you had to get people out there? No, because you had to have a yeah. container. You have to have a container. Because they're in helicopter. Uh, you know, the whole raft of issues around that.